Thank you very much, Councillor Westo. I, I won't move to a vote unless somebody needs me to move to a vote. Can I take it all in favour of this, uh, uh, this, this motion? Yes, Mr Mayor. Right, OK. I take it, no, nobody's again. So, uh, Councillor West, it is passed. Uh, we're going to item 16, Indian Farmers. Proposed by Councillor Atwell, and uh, seconded by Councillor Nato. Councillor Atwell, would you like to put your motion, please? Uh, I will. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, fellow councillors. If you have been following the international news in the last few months, then you most certainly would have come across the plight of the Indian farmers and their disappointment at the Indian government and the triple farming bills. As someone with Indian roots myself, it brings me no pleasure in having to bring this motion before us today. But by not bringing it, would be do I would be doing an injustice to the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of farmers caught up in the headlights of the Indian government. There are hundreds of thousands of farmers who have descended on Delhi, the biggest peaceful protest ever in the world, and millions have marched in protest across the world from Canada, the United States of America, Australia and New Zealand. And even here in the UK, in London and Birmingham, millions from all over the world have shown their displeasure at not only the imposition of the three farming bills, but also the level of state administrated by police brutality upon peaceful demonstrators who come to protect the ancestral pride of farming, which is not just a source of income, but has been a way of life for many, many generations. The bills, Mr. Mayor, themselves have the potential of crippling the farming industry as the farmers know it taking away a fairly open market and giving unprecedented control to third parties who would have nothing short of a racket on sales and pricing. Take with precaution the smoke mirrors on minimum support price guarantees. Farmers unions have suggested that less than 6% of actual sales are actually on the minimum support price guaranteed and subsidies are only actually being received by around less than 10% of farmers in a country where agriculture is a sta staple income source and way of millions and millions that is but a debacle for half of the nation's workforce. The worst part of all this being the triple farmers bill actually takes away the minimum support price guarantee, the only tiny bit of protected rights the farmers currently have. There have been recent news on the bill has been staged for a period of months by the Supreme Court of India who has agreed that the farmers and unions had not been consulted with the commission and has been, had not been consulted. A commission has been appointed to provide recommendations after consulting with the farmers, but the fear is these recommendations, as we all know from this chamber alone, are only recommendations that carry no guarantee of being implemented or indeed the bills being modified. The only way to ensure that the farmers are protected is to let the Indian government know that the world is watching. The so-called biggest democracy in modern times needs to show it's democratic by listening to its people and acting fairly and justly. As a nation who once ruled those lands for decades during the British Raj, the least we can do is show our support and compassion for its people and be the voice of Derby and Britain and uh, an Indian diaspora who, like myself, have many family members and friends being brutalised and punished down the path of exploitation and unimaginable sufferings by the present Indian government. Let us also not forget the UK is also reliant on importing Indian produce on a massive scale. The second biggest buyer in the world for Indian mangoes and grapes, over £25 million worth of fresh vegetable produce, including onions, of over 12 million pounds worth of dried and preserved vegetables. These are just about a few examples, and as a nation of consumers, we need to ensure we are buying from fair trade and sell as a matter of principle. As a country where we are highly protective of our own farmers and farming industry, I hope we are able to offer our support to the sentiments of this motion and send a strong message to India Modi's government asking for the farmers' rights to be protected through consultation, transparency, fairness, and democratically and without violence and brutality on peaceful protesters who are just seeking to protect their futures, their livelihoods, their family and their land. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Hatwell. Uh, Councillor Nater, you're down to second this motion. Do you wish to speak now? Reserve the right. Um, I will speak now, Mr. Mayor. I carry on, Councillor Nater. I'm having a problem with getting my camera up. Never mind. Okay, I'm sorry. Apologies for that. Uh, Don't speak. Um, the 2020, 2021 Indian farmers' protest is an ongoing protest against three farm acts, which was passed by Parliament in India on sub uh, September 2020. Farmer unions and their representatives have demanded that the laws be repelled and that have stated that they will not accept compromise. Farmer leaders have rejected a su Supreme Court of India stay order on implementation of the farm laws as well as the involvement of the Supreme Court 
appointed committee. Farmer leaders have also rejected a government proposal dated 21st of January 2021 of suspending the laws for 18 months. 11 rounds of talks have taken place between central government and farmers represented by farm unions between the 14th of October 2020 and 22nd of January 2021. All were inclusive. On 3rd of February, farm leaders warned of escalating protest to overthrowing the government if the farm laws were not repelled. However, they stay or the stay order on implementation of the farm laws remains in effect as of January 20, uh, 29th of January. And the Supreme Court appointed committee continues with the task related to farm laws and have asked for suggestions from the public before 20th of February 2021. The Act, often called the Farms Bill, which has, which has been described as anti-farmer laws by many farmers unions and politicians from the opposition, also say it would leave farmers at mercy of corporates. The farmers have also demanded the creation of the Minimum Support Price, MSP Bill, to ensure that they, the corporates cannot control the prices. The government, however, maintains that the laws will make it effortless for the farmers to sell their produce directly to big buyers and stated that the protests are based on misinformation. Soon after the acts were introduced, unions began holding local protests in Punjab. After two months of protests, farmers' unions, notably from Punjab and Haryana, began a movement named the Lojalo, translated, let's go to Delhi in which tens of thousands of farm union members marched towards the nation's capital. The Indian government ordered the police and law enforcement of various states to attack the protesters using water cannons, batons and tear gas, prevent the farmers' unions from entering into Haryana. First, then Delhi. On 26th of November 2020, a nationwide general strike of 250 million people, as per trade unions claim, took place in support of the farmers union and on 30th of November an estimated crowd of 200,000 to 300,000 farmers were converging on various border points on the way to Delhi. While a section of farmer unions have been protesting, the Indian government claims some unions have come out in support of farm laws. Transport unions representing over 14 million truck drivers have come out in support of farmers' unions, threatening to halt the movement of supply to certain states. After the government rejected the farmers' union demands during talks on 4th of December, the unions planned to escalate the action to another India-wide strike on 8th of December 2020. The government offered some amendments to the laws, but unions demanded a complete repel the laws from 12th of December, farmer unions took over highway tolls, plazas in Hirona and allowed free movement of vehicles. By mid-December, the Supreme Court of India had received a batch of petitions asking for removal of blockades created by protesters around Delhi. The court also asked the government to put laws on hold, which they refused. On 4th of January 2021, the court registered its first plea filed in favour of protesting farmers, farmers having said they will not listen to courts if they hold back. The leaders have also said, they're staying the, said that staying the farm laws is not a solution. On 30th December, the Indian government agreed two of the farmers' demands, excluding farmers from law curbing, stubble burning and dropping amendments to the new electricity ordinance. On 26th of January, 10,000 Tens of thousands of farmers protesting against the agriculture reform held a farmer's parade with a large convoy of tractors and drove into Delhi. The protesters deviated from the pre-section routes and permitted by Delhi police. The tractor rally turned into a violent protest at certain points as the protesting farmers drove through the barricades, clashed with police. Later, protesters reached Red Fort and installed farmer union flags and religious flags on the mass uh, rampant of the Red Fort. The amount of Exports, uh, it, the amount of imports that the UK does is probably the UK is the second largest importer of Indian mangoes, grapes. Import for Indian mangoes and grapes are worth over 5 million to 30 million US dollars respectively every year. UK also imports from India 30 million dollars worth of fresh vegetables, 2 million pounds worth of fresh onions uh, and, and so on. UK is the second largest importer of dried and preserved vegetables. Other food exports from India, UK include $35 million uh, worth of cereal preparations and $5 million of milled produce such as wheat flour. 
Yeah, okay, just last, par last paragraph, no. Councillor Howard. Last paragraph. Jesus. Last paragraph, Councillor Howard. Councillor Howard. Sorry? Yeah, thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'll try and be as brief as I can. Can I say at the outset, the reports I've seen and heard and some of the detail that I've heard tonight give me grave cause for concern around the treatment of the farmers in India. And that, that is unqualified. That is uh, actually exactly what, how I feel about it now. The problem that I have um, after that is that, unfortunately, in my opinion, um, I have difficulty with this coming as a motion to Derby City Council for a number of reasons. Um, the Indian state is a sovereign state and they have the right to deal with their um, issues as they see fit, subject to international condemnation, condemnation and pressure. Um, it's, uh, it's CP 41 of the Council's Constitution that says this, CP 41, motions must be about matters for which the Council has responsibility or which affect the city. Now I hope you can accept, uh, members, that we as a city, Derby City Council don't have responsibility for the actions and the events in, in India. So that's, that's out now. The, the rest of it, um, and it says, uh, which affect the city. So for functions which can only be carried out by the council, cabinet, cabinet, council cannot take decisions but can re recommend a course of action for the council cabinet to consider. That's the third part of it. Now, whether it affects the city or not, is, is probably debatable. Let me say this though, we have and I have personally received representations along these lines from members of the public in Derby who either come from the affected areas, were farmers in the affected areas, have family in the affected areas or whatever and, and I absolutely understand that they are uh, extremely concerned about that. Um, so that's but that's my position on it the monitoring officer is ruled differently and as a result we have this motion here tonight so um in in total and, and i see in the comments that councillor atwell mentions azerbaijan well part of my argument would be that unfortunately in the past similar inappropriate or non-relevant issues for the city have been brought to the council at the expense of time and like on this occasion uh, a budget night but we've made time to deal with it so that's so that's good but unfortunately as I say we've received representations and I believe we've taken the appropriate course of action which is to explain the council's position and lack of uh, responsibility for it in this matter and advise them accordingly that the appropriate person to make representation is their local MP. So Mr. we facilitate... Can I make a point of order please under CP 54? What is your, what is your point of order, Council? Right, uh, Mr Mayor, if if you'd have let me finish the last sentence off, I would have... Sort the time of has up, I have to be fair with everybody, yeah. five it, minutes, I'm, five minutes, Joe, so I I'm sorry. I appreciate that, Mr Mayor. If I can just read you the last sentence, it, it, will clear, it does impact on the city, and it, it, it will impact financially in terms of produce. <coughs> can I continue, Mr Mayor, please? Uh, Councilor you've made your point, you can continue Councilor Poulter. Thank you. Thank you. As I was saying Mr Mayor, um, we, received, we, we received representation and we believe we took the appropriate action in facilitating a meeting with uh, one of their local MPs who they made their representations to and received the explanation that she would look into the matter and reported back that, that over 100 MPs had made representations to both the Prime Minister and the Foreign Secretary about exactly this and that the response was from the government that um, they um, are making representations to the Indian government but ultimately they are a sovereign state for which even our government don't have control. 
Over and above that, I understand that there are measure, international measures uh, being considered and representations being made to the Indian government. So, unfortunately, because of the fact that we don't have responsibility or anything we do could make uh, an effect, have an effect on this, um, my group would be unable to support this motion. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Poulter. Councillor Shankar. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Poulter, as the leader of this council, trying to talk about this motion uh, so we don't have enough time, only to tell us you won't be supporting it. Councillor Shankar. September 20 is run 10, until 10, given 10, 13, to 20, the um, three um, agriculture to bills. Uh, I want to finish this meeting if I can in five minutes, which is very doubtful. Councillor Shankar, carry on, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In September 2020, assent was given to the three agriculture bills that were earlier passed by the Indian Parliament. These farm acts are as follows. The Farmers' Produce, Trade and Commerce Act, the Farmers' Agreement on Price Assurance and Farm Services, the Essential Commodities Act 2020. Successive governments in India have muted farming reform, as have governments across the world, and this is entirely within their rights of any country to do so. We have now all seen the growing peaceful protests around Delhi in India and indeed across the world due to what would be the possible consequences of these acts. Derby, like many other cities and towns across the UK, has many residents whose heritage emanates from farming in India, mainly, like myself, but not exclusively, the Sikhs from the Punjab in northern India. As with any reform agenda, there are going to be views for and against, and this is healthy, particularly in the world's largest democracy. What I, what I support and wish prevails is that a suitable agreement can be reached. But whilst the union leaders and farmers feel they need to peacefully protest, they should have the absolute right to do so without any fear. The press and journalists should also have the right to freely report on the facts and the situation again without any fear. The UK has for many years had excellent and important relations with India, many and long may this continue. So friendly but firm dialogue with the Indian government, pressing them to find an acceptable solution to this issue, ending the dispute and allowing farmers across India to return home to their families and livelihoods is a reasonable request to make of our government here in the UK. And one that I sincerely hope all our city councillors come back supporting this motion this evening. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Shankar. Councillor Sandhu. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I will be quick as possible. I think uh, my colleagues need to know what these three laws are. First law is, it says, contract farming. The contract farming is where the farmer has to have a contract with the private buyer, and the private buyer then will tell them which seed, which fertilizer they got to use, and where they got to buy from. The other hidden agenda in that law is, if farmer want to come out of that contract, he got no right to come out of it. But the private buyer can come out of that contract any time and the farmer have no right to take them to court or government can't prosecute them. Number second one, number two is about storage. The current law says the private buyer cannot store more than 10 tons and they cannot double the price in 12 months. And if they do, they will be prosecuted. But the new law says the private buyer can store as much as they want and they can double the price in the first 12 months. For example, you buy, they buy one kg rice for two pounds. In 11 months time, they can double that to four pounds. Then next 30 months, after 30 months, they can double that. And 
in the current low size, the government have a responsibility to buy all the crops from the farmers. If these low stage like this, the farmer got no nothing, no right take them a private court anything. The third one is the new law says the farmers can go to other state and sell their crops. Mr. Mayor, the average in India, the small farmer, average of the land they own is three to five acres. You can imagine if you are three to five acres and you have to go to 300 miles away to sell your crops, first of all, they have to hire transport. Then they have no guarantee they will be able to sell out crops to the MSP price. MSP stands for market standard price. So that's why the farmers are protesting against these three laws. Now, in the Indian constitution, it says, it's written there, the central government got no right, they got no right to make these new laws regarding agriculture. They got no right to amend these laws. Only states, only states can amend or make a new rule with the consultation with the farmers. If a farmer agree with them, then they can amend it. Otherwise, they can't do it. That's why the farmer feel the government brought these laws through back door. The reason this is the far, why farmers are protesting against these three black laws. The farmers started protesting, protesting in September 2020. They did their own states, but government never took any notice. So on 26th of November, they said, let's go to Delhi, start protesting there. It's not only one state who's protesting. It's the 17 states, farmer all over from the in India are protesting. They are sitting on the far border of the Delhi, and they've been there since then. And you can imagine, in minus three degree, they were sleeping on the road. They still sleeping on the road. Indian government used every tricks. They threw, they used heavy pressure tank water, throw water at them. They threw tear gas grenades, they, the police beat my farmers with their batons. Now the last thing they try to use, they send their own goons to beat my farmers. The farmers never ever reacted in any other way than peacefully. They've been protesting peacefully, and this is the record. This is the first agitation in the world which has been peacefully for last... Council Sunday, 10 seconds. Yeah, okay, thank you. So this fight against black laws, Mr. Mayor, is not only for of farmers, but of every common man in the world. So I urge everyone to support this motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mr. Mayor. Uh, Council Sunday. Mr. Before Mayor, we I go just... on, whilst I know that we, because we had a break, which I... Uh, took over, uh, uh, we had until 10.13, but uh, I have a CP42, which Mr. is requested that the meeting continues in view of where we are till we finish the motions. Mr. I've got a seconder. Uh, is everybody in favour or do we wish to have a vote? In favour. I Mr. think Mayor. most people are in favour, Mr Mayor. In favour. So we'll carry on then with the next speaker, Councillor Dinza. So, excuse me, that's a bit of an assumption. Can we have a vote on that, please, Mr. May? Ah, well, then, uh, that's good. Make it good. even longer, then, Mick. Yeah. yeah. Well, well I need to stand uh, the whole the time, Councillor Barker. If you want to vote, we'll have a vote. But I thought uh, that, I'd give sufficient time. I mean, I okay, think, so Alex. Councillor Barker, I, could I? Councillor Dinza, I think we're going to start the vote now. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, can I just confirm that we are taking a vote on to ex to extend the duration of the meeting beyond four hours, and it is Councillor Skelton moving the motion and seconded by Councillor Nater. Is that correct? Well, Councillor Dinsa seconded, seconded it. Councillor Carr. Yeah. Oh, I'm, I'm happy to second it. 
<laughs> yeah, I am, I am proposing it, Mr. Mayor, Councillor Skelton. Fine. Okay, bear with me one second. So when I read councillors' names, will you please indicate if you are for or against the motion to extend the meeting beyond four hours in duration? Councillor Anderson, please. Against. Councillor Ashburner, please. Councillor Atwell, please. For. Councillor Barker. Against. Councillor Bettany. For. Councillor Kerr. For. Councillor Carr. For. Councillor Cooper. Against. Councillor Dinser. For. Councillor Eldritch. Abstain. Councillor Evans. For. Councillor Froggart. Councillor Graves Jr. Councillor Graves Senior. Against. Councillor Harwood. Sorry, Councillor Hassel. Councillor Hassel, I believe, has left the meeting. Councillor Hazelgrave. Abstain. Councillor Allison Holmes. Councillor Allison Holmes, please. Councillor Matthew Holmes. Abstain. Councillor Hudson. Again. Councillor Hussein. Four. Councillor Ingle. Councillor Jangir Khan. Four. Councillor Shiraz Khan. Four, Alex. Councillor Kuss. Four. Councillor Lind. Four. Councillor Marshall. Councillor McChrystal. Against. Councillor Nater. Four. Councillor Nawaz. Four. Councillor Patterson. Against. Councillor Pierce. Oh, four. Councillor Peatfield. Four. Councillor Adrian Pegg. Against. Councillor Paul Pegg. Four. Councillor Potter. Abstain. Councillor Poulter. Against. Councillor Repton. Four. Councillor Ralston. Against. Councillor Russell. Councillor Sorry. Sandu. Four. Sorry, Councillor Russell. Four. <coughs> Councillor Sandu, please. Four. Councillor Shanker. Four. Councillor Skelton. Four. Councillor Smale. Four. Councillor Stanton. Four. Councillor Testro. Against. Councillor Webb. Four. Councillor West. Absolutely four. Councillor Williams. Absolutely against. Councillor Willoughby. Four. Councillor Wood. Again. And the Mayor, Councillor Harwood, please. New is fun. New is fun. Councillor Harwood, please. I know, I'm having problems again, but I'm, I'm absolutely full. So we'll, we'll carry on uh, with uh, uh, the motion 16. And I've got two minutes. <laughs> You've not declared the result yet, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> but if you'd just wait for Alex and I to tot up the votes, please. Thank you. Just to count, Mr. Mayor. Please. <laughs> Mr Mayor, um, the motion is carried by 27 votes to 13 against, with four abstentions. Thank you, Alex. We'll get on to the, the last two speakers that I've got for item 16. Sorry, who is that, Councillor Harwood? I couldn't hear you. Councillor Dinser? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Carry on. Thank you. Um, Thank you for the majority of the council members for uh, allowing the extension to carry on this. It would have been a travesty if we would have talked this motion out and then not reflect what uh, Councillor Poulter said is whether it's relevant or not for this city. Um, I won't rehearse and repeat the reasons why this is a cause worth supporting, um, but I would say this. In terms of our government having already made representations to raise 
as one can do through to another sovereign state, concerns and uh, interest for the oppressed and the vulnerable and to reconsider decisions that they are making in their own democratic processes it is an important thing that we are not dismissive at Derby City Council that it's not something that we should get involved with. I do understand the reason and rationale Councillor Poulter gave, but I would ask him to reconsider his position on the basis that under CP42, he indicated that does it affect the city and does it does the matters concern us? On those two things, I would say to you the, the affirmative. I am a Punjabi, I am Sikh, I am from the northern part of, the, of India, where I was born, and the farming communities there are smallholders, as Councillor Sandu said, and they are reliant on the current arrangements for their livelihoods. And we are talking about millions and millions of people who are either on the breadline or living in, uh, uh, in a difficult circumstances to balance their livelihoods and their books. Why should that bother us in Starby City? Well, 80 to 90 percent of the people who are from the Indian subcontinent and, and from India are coming, are, are, have got friends or relatives and have got an emotional attachment to this cause and that part of the world. As Councillor Atwell said, we have had, and many colleagues have supported, campaigns and causes in Abhijan, Abhijan, Abhijan and other parts of the world. And when we have such a significant community that contributes socially, economically, politically, and culturally to the city of Derby, and I can assure you, the majority of them are exercised and emotionally and in, in sort of a relation terms being concerned about this issue. So if the least we can do, and we've already heard from Councillor Poulter, that one local MP representing the city has made representations. We've heard from Councillor Poulter that the government has made representations. And all we are asking, and 100 MPs have made representations. And all we are saying, and I hope that the, the City Council as a whole can support this resolution by, brought by Councillor Atwal, is that we should be lending our support for the reasons I, I would suggest to you that it is material, it is relevant, it does impact the city, it does impact the citizens of Derby City, and if you think anything of them who are affected and who are wanting to raise the voice for vulnerable communities on another part of the world and the historic link with this country and you want to turn your back on that, please don't do that. I would urge you to support this resolution because it's for the right reasons and it does have relevance for the city of Derby. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Ginza. Councillor Kerr. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I want to follow on from um, Councillor Dinza's views. I haven't got the figures Councilor about the Dinza, proportion of people I haven't got any more speakers, with a, an Indian heritage so in to Derby to our conduct a vote, a recorded vote, on the amendment. Alex. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Please bear with me one moment while I just share my screen. So when I read councillors' names, could you please indicate if you are for or against the amendment as it has been circulated to you and displayed on the call earlier? Councillor Anderson, please. Councillor Burner, please. Councillor Atwell, please. Abstain. Councillor Barker, please. Against. Councillor Bethany, please. Councillor Kerr, please. Abstain. Councillor 
Carr, please. Abstain. Councillor Cooper, please. Against. Councillor Dinser, please. Abstain. Eldred, please. Councillor Evans, please. Four. Councillor Froggart, please. Four. Councillor Graves, Jr., please. Four. Councillor Graves, Sr. Four. Councillor Hassel. Against. Councillor Hazelgrave, please. Abstain. Councillor Allison Holmes. Against. Councillor Matthew Holmes. Against. Councillor Hudson. Against. Councillor Hussein. Abstain. Councillor Engel. Against. Councillor Jangir Khan. Abstain. Councillor Shiraz Khan. Abstain, Alex. Councillor Cuss, please. Four. Councillor Lind. Abstain. Councillor Marshall. Four. Councillor McChrystal. Against. Councillor Nater. Councillor Nawaz. Abstain. Sorry, Councillor Nater, that was abstain. Councillor Nawaz. Lost screen. Abstain. Councillor Patterson. Against. Yes. Against. Councillor Peatfield. Abstain. Councillor Adrian Pegg. Against. Councillor Paul Pegg. Abstain. So. Against. Councillor Poulter. Against. Councillor Repton. Abstain. Councillor Ralston. Against. Councillor Russell. Abstain. Councillor Sandu. <coughs> Abstain. Councillor Shanker. Abstain. Councillor Skelton. Abstain. Councillor Smale. Against. Councillor Stanton. Against. Councillor Tesper. Against. Councillor Webb. Against. Councillor West. Abstain. Councillor Williams. Against, please. Councillor Willoughby. Abstain. Councillor Wood. Against. And before we come to your vote, Mr Mayor, we'll just return to those councillors who didn't respond earlier. Um, Councillor Anderson, please. Against. Bernard, please. Abstain. Councillor Bethany, please. Four. And Councillor Eldred. Abstain. Finally, the Mayor, Councillor Harwood, please. Abstain. As you'll see on your screen, uh, Mr Mayor, the amendment is lost. Okay, uh, so we go back to the original, um, the original um, motion.